What's going on y'all and welcome on in. Today I got a special video for y'all. Smilegate has asked me to talk a little bit about one of our favorite things in Epic 7, summons. So let's talk about covenants, galaxies, element summons, mystic summons, friendship summons, and then a little bit about selective summon season one and two, where I'll give my suggested hero picks and where to use them. So real quickly guys, before we begin, let me know in the comments below, when it comes to summons, do you consider yourself a lucky player? Or have you been known to pity a hero or two like me lately? Regardless, we're going to cover the basics that every single Epic 7 player needs to know. Thank you guys for tuning in and thank you to Smilegate for sponsoring this video. Let's get into it. Alrighty y'all, let's go ahead and start talking about the different types of summons in Epic 7, starting with Covenant Summons. So what are Covenant Summons? Let's go ahead and take a peek inside the drop rates, and that kind of tells us what is available in here. So as we can see guys, all heroes and artifacts, including Moonlight Heroes, are available in the Covenant Summons. The only thing that's kind of out of reach would be limited summons, such as Dian, Luna, Landy, and collab units, which are also limited, but just to clarify, units like the Guilty Gear units, Slime Collab, ReZero, etc. Now, the resource we use for Covenant Summons is, as the name implies, just these regular Covenant bookmarks, as we can see here. Now, the fact that you can get Moonlight Summons from just using regular Covenant bookmarks might seem enticing, but beware, guys, the newer you are, this might be a little bit of a trap. The reason I say this is the Covenant bookmarks can be used instead to summon on collaboration banners like I mentioned previously or specific banners for heroes that you might really, really want to target and make sure you have enough bookmarks to end up pitying them. Pity, of course, is when you get to 120 summons, you guaranteed get the unit even if you were super unlucky, just in case you're, you guys are brand new and you were unaware. As we can see here, the 5-star Moonlight Hero rates is very, very low, guys, 0.15% where a five-star regular hero is 1.25, right? Almost 10 times the rate. So just be aware, guys, you might hear from your friends that they like to dump all their bookmarks into Covenants, and then they've gotten a bunch of five-star Moonlight heroes, and they might be right. They might be telling the truth, but just it takes a lot of luck to get it. And instead, I believe in the beginning, especially for free-to-plays, you're better off saving for those specific banners instead of trying your luck at the very, very rare off chance that you get a Moonlight hero. But... Hey, guys, this is a game, so play it how you want. Just be aware of the pros and cons. Moving right along from the Covenant Summons, let's go ahead and look at the Moonlight Summons, which, by the way, now also have a, as you can see at the top left here, a guaranteed Moonlight Summon, essentially like a mini pity. Now, that does include four-star heroes, and let's go ahead and take a look at the rates real quick. So what are Moonlight Summons? This is where you're going to get those special, special light and dark units. A lot of times, those are the most coveted, the most sought after, because they are generally a lot more rare than the standard red, green, blue counterparts. Now, Moonlight Summons are going to be the main way to get your hands on those very coveted and rare light and dark units. Three stars, such as Pillis and Arwell, two light and dark units that recently got buffed and look so good. Very powerful as well. Four stars like Angel of Light, Angelica, Bad Cat Armin, who got buffed. Five star Moonlight Heroes like your favorites, Apocalypse Ravi, Conqueror Lilius, just to name a few. This is going to be the main way. And as you can see here, the drop rates for the five stars compared to when we look at the Covenant banners are way, way, way higher. Now let's talk about the pity again real briefly. Every 20 Moonlight Summons, you'll get a guaranteed four or five star. You'll get that spark. And then we just go into the rates, which is 15 and 85 respectively. 15% to chance to get a five star and 85% chance to get a four star. One of the highest just chances to get a five star Moonlight Hero. Now you may not get it on your pity. It may take you over 10 tries, but this is still one of the best ways. And I promise as you just play the game continually, you'll get galaxy bookmarks here and there and you will eventually get those pities and eventually get those five star summons next up let's go over the other main way to get moonlight four and five stars and that is via mystic summons now there's quite a bit to mystic summon so let's go ahead and break it down every time a new moonlight five star is added to the game they're available in the mystic summon for a limited period of time when that time passes we go into what i like to call an off period where we have chances to get older moonlight five stars at a rerun and that's what we're currently in so let me go ahead and give you all a little preview what that looks like right now we have strays ruel specter tenebria and closer charles in this rotation and this gives us access to older moonlight five stars that otherwise we would have to just randomly get through the moonlight summons that we just looked at so in essence mystic summons are a way to get the newest and shiniest moonlight five stars as well as a way to pinpoint 
and nab some of those older Moonlight 5 stars that you may want specifically. In my opinion, Mystic Summons are the best way for new and free to play players to eventually guarantee themselves a Moonlight 5 star. Even with the Moonlight 4 and 5 star pity that we just covered, sometimes if your luck is bad, like I mentioned, you may not be able to get those Galaxy 5 stars, Moonlight 5 stars for a while. Whereas if you just grind enough, play long enough, are diligent in getting those Mystic Medals right here, Every time you get 10,000, you are guaranteed one. Now, as a lot of y'all might get it way earlier than that, that is just kind of the pity rate hitting 200 summons exactly. So 200 summons is what you need to get the pity or the guaranteed summon. And the summons you put in will carry over in between rotations. So even after Stray's leaves, let's say Moonlight Ray is next, guys. That's just a total guess. I hope he is next. He'd look super cool. But that means when Ray comes out, I will also be... I don't need 200 summons to make sure I guarantee summon him. I'll only need 139 as I've already put in 61 Mystic summons and I haven't gotten a five star yet so that carries over between banners something to make sure that you're aware of essentially whenever you put in mystic summons you'll they'll never really go to waste and they will eventually get you a guaranteed summon no matter what that's why i want it's one of the best ways the best way to get a moonlight five star now one last thing i want to talk about is or two more things roaming warrior leo right here is the moonlight four star accompanying there's always a moonlight four star but i would highly suggest you guys try to avoid this as, as you can see here, the cost is pretty steep. That's over half of what you need to get a 5-star. And most 4-stars in the game are definitely not worth half a 5-star. Unless it's someone like Angel of Light Angelica. But she's kind of a special case. She's a little bit overpowered. Now the last thing is look at the normal hero and artifacts. This is actually the pool that comes alongside Strays or any other Moonlight 5-star that you're summoning for. And let's say, for example, you're not a big fan of Ken or Elbrus Ritual Sword. You can actually take a quick look at what's next. And whenever you're fishing for any Moonlight 5-star of your choice, make sure you look at the normal hero and artifact summon rotation as well. Because instead of Ken, maybe we want says a lot more and it's worth to wait a week for the next lineup. You can always see one week lineup ahead and start to get some bonuses as well. Because if you're doing up to 200 summons, most likely you will be picking up some of these five stars four stars or three stars to try to get the best bang for your buck and you know get those bonuses as well moving right along let's go ahead and cover the element summons now these are a little bit more rare but the nice thing about them let's go ahead and take a quick look is that the rates for them are very very nice so the summon rate of table is for the normal element summons where Five stars are 5%, four stars are 35, three stars are 60%, and the special four to five star summons, we get a 30% chance to get a five star hero, which is very high, and 70% chance to get a four star hero. So guaranteed shiny spark, and a one in three almost chance to get a five star hero. Very nice way to kind of just get those extra red, green, blues, and keep in mind, guys, there are also light and dark summons, but as of right now, they are extremely rare, even more rare in general than element summons. Now, last but not least, we have the friendship summon. Now, don't write these off just yet. They may not be as exciting as some of the other summons we just talked about, but let's take a look at what these include. Now, as you can see in the friendship summons, it just includes two star heroes and one and two star artifacts. Not exciting at all, but very, very important for every single player out there from new to end game veterans. Why? Let's go ahead and start with the heroes. These two star heroes, or fodder as I like to call them, are just one of the best ways to start promoting our doggos, our phantasmas, and start promoting the heroes that we really want to use. I'm sure by now you've promoted a few heroes here and there, depending how far into the game you are. And instead of farming adventure or labyrinth stages, we can get just a bunch here whenever we need by stockpiling friendship points, friendship summons. So definitely don't neglect this area of the summon tab. Now the artifact section, one is to one and two star artifacts. We can kind of use this as fillers for when a lesser or greater artifact charm would leave us. You know, let's say we got our artifact level to 90%. I know this has happened to every single player out there, or it will eventually. You can kind of use this as a filler so you don't waste, you know, extra artifact charm experience. Or one of my best pro tips for y'all newer players you can kind of just throw these artifacts into themselves and this will actually count towards the reputation tab for getting your extra silver transmits i'll put a picture up on the screen of where you can do that okay finally we're done talking about all the different types of summons let's go ahead and get into the juicy part the last segment of the video and let's talk a little bit about selective summons now i've actually saved my selective summon season two for the longest time for a special occasion and i think this is what better time to use it than right now? So most of y'all watching have already, you know, done your first selective summon at the start of the game. But in case you forgot, or if you maybe are just watching for the first time, want to see a quick walkthrough, 
Let's go ahead and use mine right now. Let's cover the details real quickly on selective summons. We have a total of 30 chances. We can only pick one. If we get a summon we like, we can record or save them. Only one five-star hero artifact may appear, and we'll get them at the first, 10th, and 20th, and 30, a guaranteed five-star. So those are the rules. Let's go ahead and jump in and start our summon previews. So skipping right ahead, guys, I was able to find Ilanov from our first summon batch. Now, this is not a hero I'm looking for at the moment. I already have her, and I'm going to give you all a suggested list of summons right after this, the ones that I think are best for most players out there. Now, the hero I'm looking for right now is actually on that list, and it's going to be Politis. I want her as an imprint. Let's go ahead and see if we can get her. All right, let's go through these very quickly. And if there's ever something we want that looks kind of good, um, that's not Politis. We can always save it just in case because remember guys with these selective summons You're never guaranteed to get exactly what you want So make sure you have a backup at least and make sure you save something that you're at least okay with even if it's not your number one choice So I'm a little over halfway now guys. I'm getting worried. We're not gonna find Politis. So Alencia is definitely another great hero. Let's go ahead and just Record this and make sure in case we don't get anything better at least we go home with an Alencia so we reached the end of the road, and I actually didn't get the Politis that I wanted, but Alencia is definitely a very good unit, and I will definitely make use of an imprint, so I'm not too, too unhappy. That just goes to show you guys, you may not always get what you want, but try to have some backups in mind so you at least get something good. Now that we've gone over the selective summon process, let me quickly give my suggested picks for selective summon season one in case you want to reroll or haven't even started playing epic seven just yet my suggestions for selective summon season one currently up to date would be destina fire ravi and iceria destina is just a powerhouse unit and is probably my number one overall pick because of her strength in pvp where she has awesome healing uh, CR push on skill 2 and access to revive where she can be used in standard matches against aggressive opponents, everything. And her innate effect resist makes her one of the best cleansers in the game as well. For PvE, having access to revive is super, super, super good as well for difficult content like Abyss or Raids. Fire Ravi, not as strong as Destina, but still a very, very strong fire bruiser. And if you're lacking fire units that are good in PvP and PvE, uh, take a look at her. She got recently buffed very very good as well last but not least we have Iceria, who has some pvp usages especially combined with units like tamarin but for the most part definitely a pve oriented hero her skill 2 the skill reset is really why you want to take her it's so unique one of the only ones in the game especially as for how many uh cooldown turns it actually does it is definitely unique in that regard has some awesome combinations with like i said tamarin will become a pv powerhouse and as well she has access to things like defense break so a very very strong and unique unit but more pve oriented now this is the selective summon season 2 drop list and i would recommend going for a hero over an artifact the artifacts can be nice but the five star heroes that i'm about to talk about are insanely good right now and those include heroes like alencia politis ida senya shu and maybe honorable mention of flan but she's below the previously mentioned heroes that I just talked about. Now, all these heroes I just mentioned are primarily PvP heroes. I've used a few of them, such as Alencia in areas like Abyss and Advent, but for the most part, all of these are more PvP powerhouses rather than PvE heroes. But let's go ahead and talk about each one real briefly and talk about where to use them in PvP. Alencia is an Earth Element HP bruiser that brings a lot to the table, including defense up, defense breaks, AoE strips, and injury. Politis is an amazing utility unit that will hinder opponent's combat readiness while also being able to pump out tons of damage or being an annoying sort of crowd control unit with the use of artifacts like Abyssal Crown on top of her skill 1 stun effect. Ida is an ice mage that pumps out some serious, serious damage. When combined with artifacts like Taga Hell's Book, she can use her skill 2, lead straight into the skill 3, and is so, so strong for any aggressive or cleaver that wants to pump out some serious damage. Senya is an earth knight that is so, so powerful in PvP right now. With her use of her skill 3 and her skill 2, she can lock down entire teams, set up a counterattack stance, AoE provoke and just destroy entire enemy comps on her own. When combined with her artifact, Spear of a New Dawn, she's pumping out some serious, serious hurt, even on evasion and fire units because of the interaction on how it works, scaling off of her attack. 
Last but not least, we have Shu, an Ice Warrior who is so annoying to fight against, but so powerful when you use her on your side of the field. Her skill 3 sets up anti-crit, immunity for herself, area effect damage, and when it's on cooldown, gives her a chance to counterattack when any of her allies are hit. Her skill 2 is a powerful, powerful nuke that does uh, defense ignoring, and her skill 1, when combined with the exclusive equipment, can ch has a chance to proc or activate her skill 2 for free. So anytime she counters on counter set or when her skill 3 is on cooldown like an Elbrus Ritual Sword, she will just pop off skill 1s into skill 2s and just kill opponents out of nowhere. A super, super strong unit, a must-have Ice Bruiser for every player. All right, y'all, I think that about wraps it up. We talked about everything I could think about for summons in Epic 7. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any extra questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.